In 1944, more than 160,000 Allied soldiers stormed Europe. So I guess we've sort of snuck into the um, German HQ here at uh, Gamescom. Um, you sort of keep a little bit away from the, the main stage here at Gamescom with Company of Heroes 2, but you are here and it's quite an impressive little layer that you built up here. What, what are you showing journalists here at Gamescom? Uh, so we're showing press the first hands-on for Company of Heroes 2. I think we've done a couple of beats up to now, showing some of our new features off in kind of a hands-off setting. And now's really the proof in the pudding where we're going to get journalists to have hands-on with it, play it for themselves and try out all of the new features for Company of Heroes 2. What sort of mis mission is it that they're playing? So there's actually two missions people are going to be playing today. Uh, the first mission is a tutorial of sorts, which will get you used to um, the gameplay mechanics uh, or a refresher course for anyone who hasn't played for a while. Um, that will also showcase some of our new mechanics like True Sight and um, the infantry vaulting and vehicle abandonment. Then our second mission is one of our uh, Coltec missions. So uh, we announced recently our Coltec functionality and uh, some of our maps are going to be extreme cold maps, sort of the winter maps where the weather's really going to play an effect. Uh, so that's a traditional RTS map where you're going to have kind of bases, capture points, all the things that the fans are used to. But you're going to be playing now with the cold tech system, so with the breakable ice, hypothermia, blizzards, all of those cool features thrown in. So it's really exciting to let press get hands on with that for the first time. Lots of new stuff there to cover. Um, so how would you say that it sort of transformed? Because I Players have been playing Company of Heroes ever since it was released and they're sort of used to what a Company of Heroes game is. How does these things change the experience? So what was really important for us with Company of Heroes 2, we didn't want to completely change the franchise. We have a huge player base who are still playing it, mm. sort of loyal fans, and they love Company of Heroes for Company of Heroes. So we didn't want to change the essence of what the game was. The best way to describe Company of Heroes 2 is it's about giving those fans more. So we have more, graf uh, more graphical fidelity now, thanks to the new Essence 3 engine. We have more audio clarity and more authenticity. We also have more destructibility thanks to our new engine. And the final thing is we've got more tactical options. So uh, a lot of these new features that we've added in, they don't change RTS completely, but they, they advance it and they improve the mechanics that have been around for a number of years. And we think we'll really help improve the player's experience while still retaining the core essence of what Company of Heroes is. Mm. So speaking of the of the cold tech, sort of how do you make that sort of clear to the player without sort of just adding a number in, in top of the screen or, or doing something like that, but sort of keeping the player aware, aware of that? Because it's, some, it's, it's a, something that um, players aren't typically used to having to deal with in, in an in a RTS. Yeah, so um, it's a really interesting uh, set of features, actually. Cold Tech is a number of different weather-related features. Um, so just to put it into context, um, historically speaking, the kind of the Siberian winter is one of the things that's destroyed armies from the age of N Napoleon onwards. Mm. Uh, in the winter of 1941, it reached about minus, minus 40 degrees, which is obviously uh, cold enough to kind of freeze human skin. It's also cold enough to freeze fuel in fuel lines. So it played a really important part in the Eastern Front of World War II, and we wanted to capture that in uh, Company of Heroes 2. So the cold tech functionality actually brings weather to life in a strategy game. Um, and it's something you don't see a lot in sort of any type of game these days at all. So the first layer is our snow system. Mm. Snow isn't just a painted on texture for us. It's not just a white piece of ground. Snow actually has depth and we have the ability to paint on snow and remove it. So heavy snow falls, snow will accumulate on things and build up, but also explosions, fire, things like that will remove snow and you can melt snow right down to the ground underneath. Um, troops will move differently through deep snow, so they'll be encumbered by it, they'll be slowed down in a realistic way. It's not just a flat surface that's painted white. Uh, that's one of our many features in Coltec. We have breakable ice, 
So our ice has a different texture from our snow and from our other terrain types. You'll slip and slide around on it, but it also has hit points. If you drive a heavy tank over ice, you're going to actually crack the ice and you're going to cause damage to it. If you drive another vehicle over that already damaged ice, it's going to get worse and worse to the point where it's at uh, that critical uh, edge where the smallest explosion or the smallest uh, impact could actually shatter that ice and send the vehicles sort of through into, into the lake or into the river underneath. Uh, but that ice will also refreeze over maps. So you can imagine the way that battlefields are going to dynamically change mm. as ice freezes and breaks. Um, and then the uh, sort of the third most significant part of uh, the cold tech functionality is our hypothermia and blizzard system. We really wanted to capture the way that uh, this kind of level of cold is something that really impacts the troops. Mm. So we have dynamic blizzards that will blow up, blow in sort of while you're playing the game. On those maps, um, and it's not all maps because obviously the whole of the Eastern Front and the sort of that campaign wasn't all played out in the winter, but the maps that are our kind of extreme cold maps, uh, you'll actually see uh, sort of blizzards will blow in, the conditions will get really bad, and troops who are left out in the open with uh, no shelter will be prone to uh, exposure and eventually hypothermia, which can kill them. So, for example, the player now has to start thinking about do they do they have fires to um, keep their troops warm? Are they in buildings and in vehicles? Because leaving a group of soldiers out in the middle of a field, they'll gradually freeze and and die of their own accord, which is um, something again we felt added that level of authenticity that you just don't see in a uh, lot of games with weather. So, so how does that influence tactics? Can you sort of can you sort of force the the enemy to sort of can you can you blow away their covers to to blow away buildings just to make sure that they they're going to be exposed while they're moving forward or things like that is that is is yeah. that going to be a viable tactic yeah that's to that's a totally viable tactic so uh you can destroy pretty much everything in company of heroes 2 mm. so you can take down all of the buildings in an area and that's denying your enemy cover but you're also denying yourself cover so it's mm. a strategic option the players are going to have to think through really carefully um, what players are going to do is they'll probably end up moving forward staging the ground for the rest of their troops. So engineers have the ability to build bonfires which um, sort of give off a heat radius around them. So you can stage the ground but those bonfires can be destroyed. So for example a forward position with a load of fixed, um, load of fixed equipment, things like heavy machine guns, things that take setup time, they will need those bonfires around them to kind of keep them warm so they can survive the winter conditions. Mm a smart player will target those bonfires first because those emplacements are very vulnerable without uh, anything to keep them warm. Mm. And also we have to remember that World War II soldiers, they didn't really have the kind of equipment that a soldier today would have. They, they had it, it was pretty harsh. And also I believe none of them were wearing white, so they were kind of exposed to being shot as well in the, in the, in the white conditions. <laughs> yeah, so we've actually brought a level of authenticity authenticity and so the equipment people are wearing as well. Uh, the Russian army was much better equipped for the cold than the German army was, so the conditions will affect both of the armies slightly differently in the campaign. Also different types of uh, soldier were more equipped than others, so the elite troops uh, will be affected a lot less than um, your basic conscripts, where the really low level guys, they're the ones who had no equipment, uh, no real warm clothing, and they're going to be really prone to the effects of hypothermia in the cold. But is it going to affect your, your weapons as well, or is, is that sort of taken out of the equation? You can still shoot a gun even if it's... So you, you, can, still, you can still shoot a gun. Um, that's something that obviously you start throw, throwing all of yeah. those modifiers as well, and it's going to become incredibly complicated for the player to kind of work out uh, the win-loss scenario, but um, yeah, the, the weather features in terms of cold, we've focused mainly on the impact on troops rather than the impact on weapons jamming and freezing and obviously things like vehicles, fuel lines used to freeze and there's a lot of other stuff that you could throw in, but we would probably take the game beyond authentic to overly... It needs to be fun as well, right? Right, and that's always been our focus. Company of Heroes isn't about... It, it's an authentic game, but it isn't about authenticity at the cost of everything else. It's not about every single nut and bolt on a tank being exactly where it is on the real world version. Mm. It's about it looking and feeling like that tank and looking and feeling like you're in that that environment rather than worrying about, well, if it's this temperature, then would this happen if mm. this happened? And so there's there's a level of there's a level of authenticity tied in around that hypothermia, but obviously being fun is our main goal. 
So uh, you're here showing off the first playable build to, to journalists. Where are you at in development? Sort of, will there be a, a beta at some stage or what are your plans? So at the moment we're still in pre-alpha, so uh, we're fairly early stages of development, but we are planning to release in the early part of 2013, the first half for sure. Mm. Um, so at the moment we're still locking all those things in. When we start working on the multiplayer side of things, Obviously, it's really important to us to get testing done and balance is something that's incredibly important for these types of games. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are no plans that we're kind of ready to share at this time. Right. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Holding back the Nazi invaders, Russia lost nearly 11 million troops and more than 15 million innocent civilians. But the real casualty is in forgetting their sacrifice. This is their front. 